Let's get it started. Report writing for CSEC English A. When writing a report, you must rearrange and restructure given facts in a clear, logical way. That's what the report writing is all about. You're going to get some factual information, time, place, people, events, um, problems, issues, and you, you will have some names and dates thrown in, maybe an address, maybe a location. Maybe you will have to supplement that information with more to build out the report and make it sound realistic. But the idea is you're going to take all of this scrambled information and make it into um, a coherent and con concise um, report that someone else will read to get a formal and comprehensive understanding of what would have happened, right? So you're writing a report on, for example, an incident or um, something you eyewitnessed, an, an accident, whatever the case is you're going to be writing that report. Yeah, that's what report writing is all about. And you have to be prepared to um, engage in report writing because this is one of the like top four section B question types. So typically, the report you write will focus on answering um, these questions, right? usually. You're going to be looking at who, who did something or who something was done to, or who something happened to. You're going to look at the persons involved in a particular incident. You have to make that clear. You're going to look at what, what happened, you know, what were the actions taken, what happened before, during, after the incident. You're going to look at that. You're going to look at where. You need to add some details in terms of where the incident took place. Not just a general thing, but... Yeah, you'll give an address. If, if, if that is possible, you'll give, um, you know, you, you'll just make it specific. If something happened in the backyard of somewhere, you're going to mention that. You're going to be specific as to where something happened. And you need to, you're, you're going to need to tell us when something happened. You're going to give us things like times and dates. So in your report, you're looking at factual information. You will not be making up anything. You will not be speculating. You will not be, it's not narrative writing. You're not just writing a story and, you know, dropping in some interesting action scenes. You will not be writing an essay where you will try, you will try to persuade anyone of anything. No, you're not going to persuade. You're not going write to write your opinion. You're not going to write a story. You're going to get some information, some data, some raw facts, and you're going to put those same facts in the report in order to make it clear and concise and readable. Right, so usually your reports are not um, super long. They're not as long as your essay and your story. There might be 200 to 250 words they're about. All right, so I just wanna um, touch on the factual information because a lot of time, for me, what I have experienced with students is that they seem to think that facts mean something that is the truth, right? Mm. So I just wanted to touch on that that facts doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth. Because remember, this is like creative writing. This is something that you will have to make up on paper. But fact is something that you can prove to be either true or false. So you can make a statement. And once it's a statement that you can prove whether it is the truth or whether it is false, that is a fact. You make that factual statement. All right? So it does not necessarily have to be the truth. And a lot of times students think that, well, myth is not the truth, so it cannot be a fact. All right. So I just wanted to touch on that. Yeah. We have facts that aren't true and truths that, that aren't facts, um, really. Uh, if the fact, seeing that it's a fact just means it can be proven to be true or false. It's something we can check and verify. So if I say, I am, I'm a good man. It's not a factual statement because there's no way to prove or disprove that. There's no definitive measure that one can take. If I say I am handsome, it's not a factual statement. It doesn't mean it's true or false. It just, me it just means we can't verify. We can't go to a database and check and say, oh, it's true. It's on file. Adam is handsome. If, if I said Adam is, Adam is six, foot nine, 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 six foot nine, that's my height. That's a factual statement, even though it's, it's not true. It's factual because somebody can get a tape measure and measure my height and say, nope, you're not 6'9". That's a lie. 
So it's a factual thing because we can check, we can check it, right? So once it's checkable and verifiable, it's factual. So factual doesn't mean true, it just means it can be proven to be true or false. Yes, Ms. Compton has it there. Fact can be proven um, true or false. So um, these are factual questions. When you're looking at who, who was there, who did this, who did that, these are factual things. These are things that, for example, a, 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 a video, a, a camera could prove, right? The what, the where, the when, we want to stick to factual elements. No, who and why aren't always in a report, right? Not every report will have you telling how something happened or why something happened, because often these call for speculation and assumption, and we're staying away from that kind of stuff in report writing. So you, your report may cover how something took place if it is within the scope of the report, if it is possible to say how it happened without trying to guess and spell. Same thing for the why. So these may or may not be a part of it, whereas these will definitely be a part of your report. These are like your top four Ws, whereas these might come into play. It just depends on the type of report that you're writing. So I just want to um, add as well and a type of an example of the type of reports that you would um, you would be required to, to identify the how and why. For instance, an accident report. For accident reporting, let's say the police would have stated that the accident was caused because the driver was drunk. Then you would state this in your report. That's the how how the accident occurred. Um, yeah. Sorry, and that's the why. Why? Why, the yeah, why? That's the why. Why the accident occurred. All right. So in 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 cases like an incident reporting or accident reporting you may be required to put the how and why. And wait, just one one more quick question. For the incidents, mm -hmm. you just basically have to state what happened using the format, that um, using a format. Yeah, you want to give a detailed report on where it happened, when it happened, who you have to, was there, all of that stuff. As Ms. said, you have to create details in a sense. Well, some you might some details might be missing from the question. For example, someone their name isn't mentioned or the date isn't mentioned, so you have to fill in the blanks. But the import the more important thing is to make sure you incorporate the details the question gives you. Then no, you fill in the blanks in order to make the report complete. For example, you can't have a report with no date or time attached, right? So if that isn't given to you by the question, you invent that. Hmm. But okay. the, the, the real aim is to make sure you're incorporating all the important points. So you might get some points like in bullet form. You, you'll have to turn that into a coherent um, you know, paragraph structure where you're kind of going from beginning to end. You're, you're, you're giving a concise and clear and logical breakdown of the events that would have transpired. Yes. So basically, I can... I can add on to the to the details that are given to me, right? Yeah, only where necessary. You wouldn't just add only random things, but you add things that would be crucial in a real report. I have a three-step plan for, for what to do before you start writing a report. Three things you need to do. One, make sure you read the question carefully. When I say carefully, I mean very carefully. Read everything. Make sure you understand what the report is about, right? Make sure you pay attention to any specific instructions or guidelines given. Make sure you understand exactly what you need to say, what you need to report on. You cannot start writing the report without first having read the question um, properly. Step two, identify the purpose and the audience right? The purpose and the audience of the report, for the report. Um, you have to determine, of course, the purpose as well as who the intended audience is. Who is it that's going to read my report? Is it going to be a principal? Is it going to be my boss? Is it going to be a parent? Is it going to be a manager? Who is going to read my report? 
Because when you figure out <clears throat> who is going to read your report, that's going to guide your tone and level of formality. And when I say level of formality, your report will be formal no matter what. But um, sometimes the level or, or vocabulary you use might be a little bit different depending on whether you're writing to your boss or a colleague or stuff like that. So just make sure you know who is going to be reading it and make sure you know why the report is written. That's going to affect how the report is written, the language you use. Next step, so you read the question carefully. That's step one. You identify the purpose and the audience. Step three, create an outline. Right? I won't, I won't, ex I won't tell you exactly how you should create the outline. It's up to you. Practice and find a way that, that works. But um, basically, you want to um, draft a basic structure outlining. Okay, what do I want my introduction to look like? What do I want my body to look like? What do I want my conclusion to look like? So for each section, you're just going to jot down some key points or, or ideas that you want to cover. So in my intro, I want to mention blah, blah, blah. In my body, I want to mention blah, blah, blah. To conclude, I want to do this. Write down that plan so when you start writing the report, the report can flow well and you don't end up missing anything. All right? So this will serve as a roadmap, a guide, and ensures that you cover all the necessary aspects without straying off topic. And another pro tip, constantly, constantly be checking the question as you write. You're writing, check the question, right? Check the question. It is very, very easy to miss out a piece of information because they're going to give you a lot of information, you know. You're going to get like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten bullet points. So it's easy to miss one. So while you're writing, even though you would have had your outline, still continually check cross-reference to make sure you're getting everything you need to get in the report, in the report. I have sometimes because the format can vary a little bit depending on the type of report. But generally, generally, this is what your report will look like in terms of the format. So at the top left, and we have here the, your address. Just like um, with letter, it's, quite, it's, a, it's a bit similar to letter writing. The address of the reporter, the date, not the date when the incident happened, the date that you're writing the letter, the report. So the date of the, you're dating the report. If you're writing the report on January 4th, the date here should be January 4th, right? And you might be given a, you might not be given a date for when the report would have been written in the question. It doesn't mean you skip out the date. You need a date. And perhaps you might have gotten a date as to when the event happened. So the date you invent must be after the event happened. You can't go back in time. So if if so, if, I, if there was an incident on January 3rd, the date of the letter can't be January 2nd. That's impossible. You're not a time traveler, right? If you were, you wouldn't be worried about CXE. So make sure that even if you're not given a specific date, make sure the date makes sense if there's some context to think about. And if, the, if an incident happened January 1st, I don't think you would be writing a report December, right? The date is usually pretty close to the incident. Usually it's something urgent and important, you know, an accident or something. So the report would be written, you know, in an, in an, in an urgent manner. So make sure you have a date that makes sense. All right. Next, the name and title of the person you're writing the report to. And then that person's address. So you have all of this at the top left uh, as like your header. Then you have the subject or title of the report, underline center. Subject and title of the report. Subject, accident in Mayfield, blah, 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 whatever the case is. Whatever the report is about, it's going to be succinct. It's like a headline. You're not writing a full sentence. You're not writing a paragraph. You're just um, read, read, read the newspapers and look at newspaper headlines. It's just a headline to alert the reader as to what the report is about. Right? Only the most salient information would be in the title. It's just 
like six or seven words. Okay. Then you have the body of the report, which would be, uh, in, which would be about three paragraphs: intro, body, conclusion. It might be four paragraphs. You might have. Uh, it depends on what the report is and how much information you need to include. But generally, generally it's three to four paragraphs because there are so many different types of reports. It's hard to t to say it's always going to be three. It's always going to be four. It's going to be five. So you have to use common sense when interpreting the question. Cool. After the body, you have your complimentary close, just as you would have in the letter, your signature, your name, your title at the bottom left. And this would be quite similar to what would be in, in a letter. Just to add to this, this format is for a simple report, right? As Adam is saying, it's for a simple report. In terms of statistical report writing, so tonight we really want to cover like incident or accident reporting which is one of the most common ones. Um, in terms of statistical report, maybe we can find an outline and send it to you, share it with you. Um, of course, very detailed so that you understand how you can approach it. Someone asked a question, do we skip a line anywhere in the report? Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, so before subject, before the subject and title of the report, you're gonna skip a line there and skip a line after that. But, but when Adam gets into the report and show you a sample, um, Adam, you have a sample, you will see exactly yes. where you need to skip lines, okay? That's right, that's right. This is what your report will entail from beginning to end. So let's focus on what the body will look like. I like to break things down into different pieces so that um, you can apply that knowledge to whatever report you have to write, yeah? yeah I like formulas and formats. So body paragraphs, your introduction. What does your introductory paragraph do? So the introduction is the first section of the report, right? And it serves as the foundation for what is to come. Here are the key elements of your introduction. Identification of the problem or topic. You need to identify what the problem or topic is in your intro, right? Clearly state what the report will cover. This sets the context and lets the reader know what to expect. Your introduction should do all of that. In your intro, you need the six Ws, or at least, at least four of the Ws. These are crucial for providing a complete overview of the situation. You will not be adding details in your intro, but we want to get a general overview of what happened. Not just what happened, but the Ws. So in your intro, you're going to briefly mention who. Identify the main entities involved. These entities could be persons, individuals. They could be organizations, right? You want to make that clear in your intro. You don't want your intro to be finished and we still don't know who, who was in the accident. That wouldn't be an effective intro. Make sure you talk about the what. Describe what the report is about, right? Be specific about the topic or the issue. Nice. Where? In your intro, from the very beginning, you need to tell us where the issue happened. Good. When? Include the time frame relevant to the data or the, the events. Be specific with the dates and times. We need to know when something happened in the intro. These are optional, the why and the how. The reason, uh, the purpose behind the report, the, and stuff like that, how the, how the important actions happened. We don't always include the why and the how. And a lot of times the why and the how call, call for speculation, which we want to avoid. But these four are a must. Who, what, where, when. Call them the W's, W, 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 W. And we even have a nice little convenient W in the hole. Your body. What is your body? Um, and when I say body, I mean the body of your body, right? So in the general structure, we have the body, which would be your intro body conclusion. So the body of the body now. 
the body's body. Body's body. Um, the body of an eyewitness or incident report. We're kind of focusing on these for now. Um, delves into the specifics of what the observer saw. So observer, especially if it's an eyewitness report, right? Incident report, you may be an observer, you may not be an observer. Read the question to determine the POV, the point of view. Now, in your body, keep these points in mind for your body. Sequential narrative. Describe the events as they are, as they unfold in the order they occurred. Right? So event A, then event B, then event C, then event D. Maybe in the question they switch these up. In your report, it needs to be chronological. You don't tell me the beginning and then tell me the end and then tell me the middle. Make sure you're going in order of what happens. Very important. Next tip, detailed observations. Include specific details about what was seen and heard. Mention any actions, reactions, and dialogues that are relevant to the incident. You're sticking to relevant information. If something doesn't connect or doesn't matter, you don't need it. Point of view. Keep this in mind. The prompt, the essay prompt, will dictate the perspective you write from. You may need to write in first person, right? If, for example, you're writing from the point of view of a bystander or someone involved in the incident, in some cases, it's more appropriate to write in the third person. So check the prompt and make sure you know what point of view you need to write from. For eyewitness report is always first person because you are the one who saw the thing, right? Environmental conditions. Describe the environment in which the incident occurred, including any factors that may have influenced the event. For example, if you're writing about a road accident, you might want to mention, like, what if it was raining and that would have contributed to the accident? You'd want to mention that. Right, so mention that, especially if it if it really um connects to the to the issue at hand. Response to the incident. Mention any actions taken by the observer in response to the incident. Um, this usually um you save this for the conclusion though. Like kind of what happened after the incident, like the aftermath. Usually you save this for the conclusion. Yeah, it could be mentioned in the in, in the body, but usually you focus on that in the conclusion. Just one comment. Um, depending on the report that you are asked to write, sometimes you have to give recommendations or suggestions for the report. So that may also be included there. Yes, yes. Uh, recommendations or suggestions would definitely lead into your conclusion. Conclusion, okay. I see you have it. Right. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. So when you conclude, tell what happened after the incident, right? Some persons have, um, some persons suggest you restate what happened, like summarize, that's not necessary. Um, just tell me what happened after the incident, if something happened after. And this is where you would include, if necessary, um, suggestions for a follow-up. If applicable, it's not. Every, it's not that every report will require that, but if it makes sense, um, give us some recommendations that stem from the incident, or some further investigation that needs to be done, actions that need to be taken. You would do that as you conclude. So you will be done. You will be. You will be finished with the, the actual events of the incident. I know it's like okay. Considering the incident, we should do this going forward. For example. All right. Now, in general, throughout the whole report, keep these two tips in mind. You need an objective tone. Keep the language objective and focused on observable, observable facts. Objective, so it's not your opinion. You're not telling me what you think, what you like or dislike. Keep it objective. Keep it focused. Don't 
start talking about everything else. Stick to the incident and keep it unobservable facts. Don't just tell us, oh, I, I, I thought the, the criminal was a very bad person. I, I disliked his demeanor. No. Just tell us what you saw, what you heard. Tell us what happened. Don't go into any opinions. It's a report. It means you're reporting on something that happened, something that factually happened. Clarity. Make sure your report is clear and easy to understand. Avoid any ambiguity, meaning we shouldn't um, read your report and be, okay, so, so, so did he see it from this angle or that angle? Were there two persons in the fight or three? I'm not sure. Make sure it's clear. It's a report. Make sure it's clear. This is not where you're going to add in those nice figurative language and the metaphors and the, add the fancy vocabulary. It's about clarity. It's about clarity. Stating the facts in a way that is unmistakable.